The examination of all surfaces of the tooth for carious lesions is an important observation that must be made before starting a crown preparation. If present their extent must be determined and plans formulated for treatment prior to initiating the crown preparation. The caries must be carefully excavated, the remaining tooth structure evaluated, and further treatment of the lesion determined. Hello and welcome to our dental learning studio, I'm your hostess Dr. Marie Huggy. Join me in welcoming today someone who needs no introduction, Dr. Sigmund Poos. Welcome Dr. Poos. Thank you Marie, it's good to be here. Today Dr. Poos and I will be discussing the conservative full crown preparation for the lower first molar. Yes, Marie, you know it's all about anticipatory planning. We're going to tell you what we are going to tell you. Then tell you. Then. Tell you what we told you. Dr. Poos, is there still a place for the conservative complete metal crown preparation? Oh my goodness yes, Marie. There remain some indications for the complete cast metal crown. In addition, the newer monolithic zirconium restorations can utilize the same preparation. First we shall discuss indications, disadvantages, and armamentarium for the procedure followed by a step-by-step -step instruction. Dr. Poos, you know the old adage that practice makes perfect. Should the student become proficient with it into form? Yes most certainly, although, I prefer to say that practice makes progress. One should spend as much time as necessary gaining confidence with the patient's simulation tooth preparation prior to treating a real patient. I can assure you it's time well spent. The diagram illustrates in millimeters the minimum tooth reduction required. The indications for this type of restoration include extensive loss of coronal tooth structure, when axial or occlusal contours cannot be corrected with a more conservative restoration, and most endodontically treated posterior teeth. The preparation has a chamfer margin prepared with the round-ended, tapered diamond burr such as the Brassler 6856 type burr. Correct application of this burr will result in a chamfer width of approximately one half millimeter with axial wall taper, three to five degrees of each axial wall. Gross reduction is also performed with this type of burr. The flame-shaped burr is used to provide access to the proximal surfaces of the tooth. After the appropriate access is accomplished the surfaces of the tooth, 6856 is used to refine the proximal chamfer margin. The K-type burr is used to remove lips from the finish line. Lipping of the finish line is produced when more than one half the burr width engages the axial wall in the chamfer area. Begin the preparation by using the 6856 to produce depth cuts on the occlusal surface. Depth may then be verified with a periodontal probe. The grooves are then connected. The reduction is performed anatomically preserving the basic external anatomy of the tooth. Reduction may be evaluated with a periodontal probe, bite tabs, or putty reduction guide. About 1.2 mm is desirable. After finishing overall reduction is approximately 1.5 mm. Slightly less reduction may be placed in the non-functional cusp areas, but the restoration must not be too thin. Some operators advocate slightly more reduction. Assuming retention and resistance form are adequate, slightly more reduction on the order of a half millimeter is not discouraged. After occlusal reduction, axial depth grooves are placed in the cervical two-thirds of the tooth and are about one-half the width of the 6856 burr, keeping the burr in contact with the tooth and parallel to the long axis, connect the depth grooves. Light pressure and multiple sweeping movements of the burr will produce a smooth uniform surface of correct taper. The preparation is gently lowered to the desired location of the finish line. The chamfer should be less than one half the diameter of the tip of the burr to prevent lipping. After reduction of the cervical two-thirds of the axle surface the functional cusp bevel is placed. The burr is held parallel to the opposing cusps at about a 45 degree angle. Reduction should include space for the buckle groove. 
the reduction is sufficient to allow room for the restoration in all excursions. There are no sharp line angles. The lingual is gently rounded. In profile, the external outline form is similar to the buccal and lingual contours of the adjacent teeth. This is accomplished by reducing the tooth anatomically and preserving the basic outline of the original tooth. This is one reason why preoperative build-up restoration should be to full contour. The reduction is carried into the embrasure as far as possible without touching the adjacent tooth. Proximal contacts may be reduced with the flame-shaped burr. You will not get a ledge using this burr. Marie, I want our audience to fully understand that it is very important not to damage the adjacent contact. Several methods are suggested. It is suggested to observe the adjacent tooth and avoid distraction while performing this reduction. You are so right Dr. Poos. Obliterating the adjacent contact necessitates some type of reparative treatment, although there may be some circumstances where recontouring the adjacent tooth is desirable. A flame shape burr is used to access the contact area. Once sufficient access is established the axial wall and chamfer are prepared with the 6856 burr. Extreme care is taken to avoid irreparable damage to adjacent teeth. The illustration demonstrates use of the flame-shaped burr. After access to the proximal is established, the axle walls are smoothened and a chamfer finish line is established. Sufficient, occlusal, reduction is critical and several methods may be used to evaluate. Examination with closure and centric and excursions is mandatory. Other methods include a putty reduction guide or red wax. Ideally, axial wall height is 4 mm with a 3 to 5 degree taper. If this cannot be achieved retention may be enhanced by lowering the margins and the placement of boxes and grooves. Lipping should be removed with the K-type burr. The restoration cannot be satisfactorily produced with a lipped finish line. The preparation should be smooth and all line angles rounded. This is accomplished using stones, or a fine finishing diamond. In summary, perform diagnostic procedures required to verify the diagnosis. Beginning with depth cuts reduce occlusal 1.2 mm. Proceeding, with depth cuts reduce axle walls with a 0.5 mm chamfer finish line. Forming a 3 to 5 degree taper per side. Place a functional cusp bevel. Round lingual line angle. Remove proximal walls. Create a continuous circumferential chamfer. Verify occlusal clearance, smooth the preparation, and round all sharp line angles. Eliminate undercuts and lipped margins, ideally there should be 4 mm axle wall height. Dr. Pools will summarize the individual preparation steps. Using depth cuts reduce the occlusal surface. The upper image illustrates the orientation of the burr in the reduction of the cervical two-thirds of the buccal surface. It is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The lower image illustrates the orientation of the burr for reduction of the lingual axial wall. The burr is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. For the beginner, a graphite line may be used to guide placement of the finish line. Reduce the axial walls. The image illustrates the orientation of the burr in the reduction of the necessary functional cusp bevel. This bevel parallels the opposing maxillary cusps. The external outline form of the preparation maintains the original anatomic form and mirrors the adjacent teeth. After reduction of the occlusal, buccal, and lingual surfaces, the proximal is accessed with a flame shaper. It is important not to abrade the adjacent tooth. 
The illustration demonstrates the use of the 169 bar to access the proximal area. This is acceptable, but care must be used to avoid creating a ledge. The proximal is made accessible to the 6856 type or end placement of the chamfer finish line. The location of the finish line allows access for a die saw without abrasion of preparation. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Pools, to discuss the conservative full coverage crown preparation. I hope that you can join us again in the future. It's always a pleasure, Marie. Thank you very much for having me. This is Dr. Marie Huggy thanking you for joining me and Dr. Sigmund Pools. Please join us in the future. Those interested in fixed